and there we have our two documents in our Google Docs. Now we can access those from anywhere. We go back to our Gmail stuff and we go to the Google Docs applet. We might need to refresh and if we go there you can see the two Google Docs right in our Gmail window which is cool. Now we have everything, the calendar and the Google Docs all in the window. Next up we're going to go and configure our little calendar. Now Google Calendar, it will ask us for our time zone because it needs that to uh, work with shared calendars and stuff and take uh, time delays and uh, time zone differences into a account. So Belgium, that's GMT1 Brussels and continue. It will be presented by our Google Calendar. We have our month view on the left and the view of the days and you can see by the tabs that you can choose day, week, month, full days, agenda. But we're going to go to settings, see if uh, there are some options we can pimp. And as you can see, you can choose the time zone, the country, the date format, the time format, when the week starts, whether or not to show the weekends, what the default view is, what the custom view is, what the location is, and I'm going to type in hustled. And this is especially uh, interesting for the weather. So you'll, you'll automatically have the weather forecast for the next few days in your calendar. Let's click Save and there you go. As you can see, it's not very nice today. But it's going to be better tomorrow, even better after that. And of course, when the weekend comes up, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, we're going to have shitty weather. Back to Settings and we click on the calendars tab. Now you can see we can create new calendars so we can have several calendars in our GCAL interface meaning that we can have one for school, we can have one for work, we can have one that we share with our friends, we can have one uh, that shows when we podcast. So you just give the calendar a name, give it a description, possibly give it a location and you can make it public so it can be accessible by just about anyone. So be careful when you do this. Don't make your own personal calendar public. That's not really uh, very interesting. Now you can uh, choose the people that you want to share them with. They have to have a Gmail account as well and you can give them several rights. Either to change accounts or just see your uh, change uh, events or just see your free time. So now you see I've got both calendars up and running in my GCal. Well done. Having your stuff online is a good thing, but we're going to take it one step further. We're going to take it offline. This means that you can access everything in your Gmail even when you're not connected to the net. If you're going to do this, these messages are going to be downloaded to your computer. So make sure it's not a public or a shared computer. Always make sure it's your own personal computer. Click Install after you click the Offline button and install the Google Gears. This is something that you will have to uh, do on Firefox of course. This won't work on IE. Click on the install button, install Google Gears and this will ex install the extension. Restart Firefox like that. Nice desktop, huh? <laughs> Firefox is restarting there we go. It tells that the uh, restarts that everything has been installed. And um, it will ask us if we want to offline our Gmail on this computer. Click Allow. And uh, it will ask you if it can create a shortcut on your desktop. And this will look like an application shortcut. It will work on a Windows, on a Linux, and on a Mac system. By just clicking on that shortcut, you'll see your Gmail interface, whether you're offline or online. Any mails you compose or reply to offline will be automatically synced online. It's finishing the offline installation by synchronizing all of your emails. And in this case, that will be pretty quick because quite frankly I don't have a lot of mails on this system and also if you have a bad connection which is called flaky connection mode where your connection to Gmail drops on and off regularly you can also use this offline setting
in our Google Docs we can do the same thing. Go to Google Docs, click on Enable Offline Access. Now we don't have to uh, reinstall Google Gears because we already did that. Click I Trust the Computer and click on OK as well. As you can see, it's uh, synchronizing everything down to the PC, to the Mac, or to the Linux machine. Doesn't really care if you adjust as long as you're running Google Gears. Now it gives me an error here, but there's actually nothing wrong. So uh, it might be uh, wise to do this a few times if it doesn't work right out of the box. I was taking a look at settings if I had to change anything there, but it's okay. As you can see, the little check mark is green, which means that my um, offline cache of the Google Documents has been synchronized. And as you can see, I have two applications on my desktop, Gmail app and Google Docs app, which both enable me to start up um, the offline versions of uh, both Google Docs and Gmail. And you can drag these into your start menu or into your launch bar or wherever you want to use them. You'll have them with you all the time. Now the one thing that is not something that you can do is take your calendar offline, at least not yet. Google is planning to do that as well, but so far the only thing that you can do is access your calendar online. But beside that, you have pulled everything of your Gmail and your Google Docs offline, which is a job well done. Okay, just to let you know this is a cross-platform show. We do uh, everything on everything. This is a Linux system, uh, Ubuntu 8.10, and we are going to install Google Desktop. Go to your, uh, boot up your Firefox, go to Google, and look for Google Desktop. In uh, my case, I had to go for the second link because Google wants to present me with search results in Dutch, which I don't want. So make sure that you download the application in the... Uh, language that you want. You will need a graphical user interface for this to work, but if you don't have that, well, how could you be using Firefox? Click on the download link and you'll be able to choose between the 32 and the 64-bit versions of the Ubuntu deb file. If you're on a uh, Fedora system or Red Hat system, you need the RPMs, and if you are on a Debian system like, for example, Ubuntu, you need the Debian file. Read through the EULA real fast. Nobody reads those, actually. Click on Accept and Install, and save the file. That's pretty small. Double-click it in the download section so you start it up straight away. And it will install the package installer. It will launch the package installer, where you just click Install Package, enter your root password, Wait until it downloads. Well, not downloads, installs actually. It'll take a little while. Okay. Click on close. Close the windows. And check applications. There you have it Google Desktop in its own little menu. Now there's the desktop and the preferences. As you know, we always set the preferences first. <clears throat> it will ask you to set Google as your home page and improve the uh, Google desktop by sending anonymous user data. Don't check that. You'll, you want some privacy. Now you can say where Google is going to index things. Uh, Google desktop is going to search all of these uh, options offline. You can always uh, tell it to index your Gmail account. That way you can search through your Gmail account straight from your desktop using Google Desktop, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> just, just enter your password. OK. Save preferences, please. You can uh, make sure that you get this cool launch bar, and you can uh, 
tell it where to search by default, either the web or the desktop. Show the desktop results as I type. How many results you want to see. The integration, that way if you search something in Google it will give you your desktop results first and your internet results later. I don't really like that, I usually uh, turn that off because when I use Google Desktop I just want to search my local content and when I use the Google on the web I just want to search the web content. If I double click control control I will get a cool launch bar that will enable me to, ha to search stuff. Now if I go searching for stuff uh, and I have defaulted to the web it will of course go to the web right away. But uh, if I told it to uh, do some uh, desktop stuff, uh, it will have to index the stuff on my desktop first. I've searched for feedback and as you can see it pulled up a message in the Gmail folder that I have. And if I leave it running to index it will also be able to search my desktop. So Google Desktop is all installed. The last thing I want to show you is the Google Gadgets. Now, being a cross-platform show, we're going to go for a Windows device this time. And we're going to search for Google Desktop first and install that. Google Desktop downloads, blah, blah, blah. IE is giving me crap. Correct language. We did this in the previous part. Install Google Desktop. Yes, I do want to download stuff. OK, run or save this file, uh, run, run, forest, run, run, come on. There we go. And this process of installation is pretty much the same as the one I showed you on Linux a little earlier. I had improved the Google Desktop crash reports and stuff. We don't want that. We don't want to send anonymous data. Google knows too much already. And once the Google Desktop is installed here, you will see the sidebar icons or the gadgets. This is something that isn't available in Linux by default, which I think is, I don't know, pretty sad because uh, it's really a nice uh, piece of application. <clears throat> so we have our gadgets here on the right and I'm just gonna deselect the ones that I don't think are very useful. We got the weather, the clock, we're gonna get some new ones. clock wants to pop up. <clears throat> I'm going to set the clock right because I don't live in the United States. My time zone isn't really correct. Let's see, Belgium. No, not Bolivia. Belgium. I am in Hustled. Add that. Remove the second one. Click OK. And the clock will probably set itself right pretty soon. This is the slideshow thing, which is nice if you have pictures of your girlfriend or your kids. That way you have them in your sidebar. Web clips, scratch pad, don't really need that. I'm going to get us some new ones. Now, the way you do that is uh, quite easily to search for Google Desktop Gadgets. Click the first link. And there are, you are, there are several Google gadgets that we're going to use. The Gmail gadget. I'm going to open that right away. The Google Calendar gadget. Same thing. And the Google Docs gadget. Now you need a little bit of a resolution in order for all of these gadgets to work. So this is just a small resolution. And it won't really work. Uh, very very well but if you have a larger screen the gadgets aren't that big in relation just enter your uh, login and your password for your Gmail account and this gadget will automatically go into your Gmail and your Google Docs and your Google